Like a great number of people who have picked up a camera at some point in their lives, I was drawn to the idea of being a professional photographer, of being paid to take photographs, this thing that I enjoyed doing. Although, and I'm going to whisper this quietly, I never really had a burning passion to be a professional photographer. How's it, how's it? Welcome back. Thank you ever so much for being here today. Yeah, I just, there was a thing that I, I never really jumped out of bed as, as a teenager or something like that, thinking I had a burning desire to take photographs and be paid for it. It was a, a career choice that I sort of landed in almost by accident. Uh, you know, growing up in South Africa in the 80s, I was required to go and do conscription, you know, serve in, in the army for two years, and I didn't really feel like doing that. So the option was to go and study at a tertiary level. And because my marks were so poor at school, I ended up doing photography because I kind of enjoyed it and, and you didn't need any marks. So, you know, double win for me. I was very lucky that I got accepted into Pretoria Technicon Photo School and I, and I must send a big shout out and thank you to Harold Carlson for actually seeing some potential in me. So hi Harold, because I know you watch the channel from time to time. But this is more a kind of a case of why I stopped taking photographs, you know, professionally, you know, it, it, for, for money. Um, because I really, I just, it was never there as a burning desire and, and certainly when the the first lockdown happened in the UK. I'd already been on the fence for a number of years about my family portrait studio. I'd, I'd been there for, oh, I think at that point about eight years or so. I wasn't really entirely happy with it. So that period of, of, of enforced withdrawal from family portrait photography, from professional photography, gave me a chance to reflect, to, to think about the things that I really enjoyed about photography, that you know, what was it that, that I liked? And what I actually liked was not getting up at seven o'clock in the morning, going to the studio for, you know, a couple of shoots, you know, a, a day, possibly you know, spending my weekends, spending my evenings, you know, trying to sell photography to people. In the UK here, most family portrait studios work on a basis of kind of like doing a, a pro bono, th not pro bono, you know, for just, you know, shooting on spec. So you find an excuse to have people come into the studio, you know, free shoot, what have you, and then you try and upsell afterwards. It's, it's not a hard sell thing, I know some people can do hard sells, but it was something that I, I was never 100% comfortable with doing it. I mean, I know you can make a good living from doing this, and certainly here in the UK there are a number of studios who, who turn over millions a year, you know, and I'm not going to name them, but you, you know who they are if you live in the UK. And these places can be but they feel like a factory they feel like it's a production line and especially so when you are just a single person taking photographs when it's just you because not only was i taking all the photographs i was doing all the marketing i was doing you know all the the sweeping of the studio i can't tell you how many times i pushed a broom around my studio mopping the floor cleaning the windows responding to emails sorting out orders there was all the stuff that nobody ever tells you about when they say, oh, you can you know, become a professional photographer. This is the, the glamour lifestyle, lead the lifestyle you want to do, pursuing your passion. When it, the taking photographs part of it is such a small, small fraction of, of, of your life as a professional photographer. And not only that, you can't actually photograph what it is that you want. There's a saying in the photographic world that you shoot for the sale and you shoot for the soul. And, and I thought, ah, oh, I'll be clever. I will let, I will make people want my soulful pictures. I will produce arty, <laughs> is that word, arty portraits of their children that they will absolutely love, that people will come from all around to have pictures done. And ultimately, it wasn't really what people wanted. Certainly, all, all from this way, it wasn't what enough people wanted, especially where I live out here in, in the sticks. So for years, you know, I was kind of, I, I was, I was, it, it, I was really struggling with the idea of, you know, being a professional photographer because I wasn't happy doing it. And then that period of advice, you know, forced me to, to think about what did make me happy. And, and, and it gave me a chance to breathe. And what I realized was that what really makes me happy in photography is helping other people, is helping 
other photographers find their way of talking about photography, not about the nuts and bolts, not the, the, the lenses and the technical aspects, which, which within the business side of photography, when I went to workshops and, and seminars and things, that was generally what the conversation, you know, centered around, talking about lenses and, and things. And, and, and I think out of all the people whom I met throughout my career as a business photographer, very few of them knew about photography I, and I, as, a, as a wider thing you know it's like you, you could say ugh, people knew obviously Ansel Adams and, and Avedon but if you mentioned somebody like Peter Lindbergh or you know Dan Winters or you know you, you like Sally Mann and Dion Arbus these they were like no no not heard of these people who who are they because if it didn't center around how to make money from photography they weren't really interested so this is kind of why I thought you know I want to start talking to people about photography but the thing that i enjoy the the art of photography and that channel name was already taken so <laughs> so i just had to take another channel name but but that was the point i wanted to talk to you about what i love about photography which is which is the, which is the art of photography why we photograph why i was drawn to photographs and taking photographs as a youngster when the idea of it being a business wasn't something that I considered, I was just I was in it for the for the strict definition of being an amateur, which is obviously you know just doing it for the love of it. So fortunately, YouTube allowed me to do this, allowed me to have a platform to actually reach out people whom I never would have managed to to speak to. Certainly not within my own small little you know group of of, of influence. <laughs> Not people of influence, but people who I knew, you know, and certainly not at studio because I never, I never met any other photographers. I, I mostly on a day-to-day -day basis, I would meet them every few months when we got together in in places to have workshops and, and you know and discuss business things. But the day-to-day -day of being a photographer, I never spoke to anybody. I never had anybody come into the studio who, or very rarely, whom I could talk photography with. My job was to sell things. So, so having this, this platform, having this ability to have these conversations and to meet people like you who are exceptionally excited about photography, who, who want to pursue it for the pure sake of, of being a passion. This is why I kind of turned my back on professional photography because it's not something I enjoyed. Now, you know, I am able to photograph whatever it is that I, I, I want to. And if I want to, I can share them with you. I'm not forced to do anything my, my income is not dependent on whether or not the people sitting on actually this very couch because this used to be in my studio right where i am whether or not they are going to spend some money or not it was too up and down it was you know i it was too open to influences from outside from beyond my control and that's where youtube really has sort of stepped in because obviously you know i get income from from the ads that are shown in the videos and and the you know the course content that I, I sell you know teaching people the things that I have learned over the years and, and helping to make them better photographers and that's far more sustainable I think in the long term than having a portrait studio just look at what look at what's going on right now there are so many pressures on people's discretionary spending that I was talking to somebody the other day who's just in the process of actually closing down his studio and we were both like can you imagine still being a professional photographer in this financial environment. I, I can't imagine, I can't imagine how scary that must be. So I'm, I'm, I'm glad that I'm actually here <laughs> talking to you guys, you know, sharing our common love of photography because it makes me more financially secure. There's, you know, it's not depend. you're not, you know, you, you don't have to spend money to be here watching me. And, and, you know, I can get money from, you know, advertisers and sponsors who are not as emotionally attached to the wider world of things. There will always be advertisers, irrespective of, of the financial things in the wider world. So that's, you know, it's, it's, so that's a really, you know, it's a great thing. And, and it's, and certainly I'm happier. And I think, you know, it's, this comes through in these videos where this is exciting. I'm getting a chance to talk and to share things with, with you guys. And, and I'm immensely grateful for you all being here because it is, it's a wonderful community. There's, I, I get feedback that's actually interesting. I get to 
develop relationships with with you know you guys who watch these videos that never happened at the studio no, people don't keep in touch and hey how you doing and, and comment on things so it's wonderful to be in this environment where not only have I rediscovered my own you know enthusiasm for photography and this channel certainly has stoked that but I also get to see the enthusiasm from you from your excitement about thinking about photography in different ways and if, if I can continue to prompt these thoughts to encourage you to think about photography in 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 directions that you possibly hadn't have considered and to rekindle the, the well, I say enthusiasm I keep saying enthusiasm but that's the whole point rekindling the enthusiasm there's you know I, I don't often do this but I, I google myself <laughs> recently and I found a couple of threads on reddit where people were talking about the channel and a lot of people said that you know the content that was being produced and, and what have you that it helped re-inspire them to take photographs to continue taking photographs and and that is the greatest thing that is why I'm so pleased that I kind of actually stopped breaking my back on the millstone of of my studio that I, I kind of I went to it was an albatross around my neck because it certainly wasn't that full on and, but it was I think it was holding me back I think it was holding me back from fulfilling the potential that I really wanted in photography that I'd made a misstep by thinking that I was you know restricted to being just a portrait photographer of families and that I could do nothing else that there was nothing else for me to do so this is kind of really it's it's a way that I just you know that that we have within ourselves I think the the, the method and the means to express something unique about the world and and I'm lucky that I found a a platform that I can help I can help you express yourself and and I, 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 I've said this in a number of videos that it is the greatest thing for me to see how much people continue to find enjoyment in photography and and if you are considering you know at some point being a professional of, of, of exchanging your photographs for money then I would say go for it actually just you know if it's what you want to do then then by all means do it but do understand that there is a huge difference there is a huge difference taking photographs for yourself and taking photographs for somebody else with the express intent of selling them but what I do know is how to find inspiration for your photography I mean and I'm not talking about oh go and photograph this that and the next thing I'm talking about finding it in here finding your drive to take photography I can certainly offer guidance about you know sort of images that that I feel would work for you you know and 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 you know and help you develop your photography forward I sort of think of these videos as chats like we're sitting here in my lounge you know having just a chat about photography because this is kind of really what it boils down to is finding a place where we can actually just talk about photography you know not this is how secret 10 secret hacks to you know doing better photographs because I, I really I don't understand this I, well I do understand I understand completely why the, all the videos are titled this way online you know seven beginner mistakes and all that sort of stuff it's because they drive clicks and you know and I've been experimenting with, with titles like that as well and they, they some of them work and some of them don't it's kind of you know it's a, it's a sort of a, it's a it's a thing right but photography should be a, a happy place I don't want to keep ramming down your throat. Say, oh, these are the mistakes you're making and stuff. No, they, it's not. We all make mistakes. It's, it's part and parcel of, of 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 learning something. You know, so what? It makes uh, you know. It doesn't. It doesn't really matter. What this is all about is just kind of we're having a chat. We're having a nice little conversation about you know things that we, we find interesting. Some topics are more interesting than others, and that's you know that's kind of how it is. And and some. Videos get a lot of subscribers and some lose a lot of subscribers. It's a it's a yin and a yang. But ultimately, you know, if you are enjoying all of these 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 videos and you're you're here and you've been you know you're a supporter of the channel, I want to thank you ever so much for helping me become more enthusiastic about my own photography, about photography as a as a as an art form. I'm now a lot happier, a lot more comfortable with 
photography than I was this time three years ago. This time three years ago, I was in a complete state. I, I, I wish I hated my photography, um, but I wasn't doing photographs for myself at all, not a sausage. And, and I think a lot of professional photographers often feel this way too, that there are many pressures on them to create photographs and not necessarily the ones that they want to take. Anyway, just food for thought here on a Monday, just, you know, think the sun is shining and, and all these sort of things. So I think, you know, I'm going to go outside, I'm going to potter around in, in my garden, enjoy the fact that I'm not actually in my studio sweeping the floor, answering millions of emails, but rather creating wonderful content for you guys, my lovely, lovely audience who I appreciate so, so very much. Thank you for watching and I'll see you on Wednesday.